All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Into the Great Wide Opens. I'm Jamie Bruce. With me, as always, Brad Leitner. And we're on the Straightcast platform tonight. We actually uh, hijacked the Wednesday show. It was nice to have some better walkout music. I think that's been the, the itch, issue with our intro, Brad. We've always been doing it to Tom Petty. And I like Tom Petty, but that's some junk walkout tunes. <laughs> yeah. How's it going, Brucey? Oh, I'm good, bud. I've just been elbows deep. I got a new got a new big lund here that I've been rigging from scratch and been plenty busy with that. How about you? I've just been living the fishing gypsy lifestyle, honestly. I've been uh, hanging out. I had a photo shoot with FXR down on Gunnersville last week and just stuck around and stuck a bunch of big bass, basically. Just trying to learn the right southern. Now? Yeah, I'm uh, right by Scottsboro, Alabama, and uh, just trying to figure out these southern bass because obviously I don't know how to catch them. You're turning into a local. Ah, uh, no, I don't know. I'm starting to be able to catch them. Yeah, it's getting easier for sure. Yeah, you're being modest. We're pretending like we never talk ever, but I talked to you just the other day and you said you had uh, took home the dub and a big derb on Gville. Ah, yeah, me and uh, Nono fished a little derb on uh, out of waterfront on Sunday and took home the dub, which felt good to actually get some win done <laughs> and then i did a little tuesday nighter last night with uh it's not really a little tuesday nighter it's kind of different down here in gunnersville from where i grew up like you go out there fun fishing and you see swindle you see boyd duckett you see i mean everyone lives around here so a little tuesday nighter last night i think jacob walls yeah jacob walls was there boyd was there for a little while i mean it's it's pretty, uh, pretty top notch. Uh, pretty cool. I didn't huh. do as well last night, but uh, the boys caught him. I mean, like sixteen pounds for four or for three won it. So, yeah, that's doozing her. I'm a little disappointed. I thought we were Tuesday night partners, bud. Didn't think you'd cheat on me like that. I went by myself. If you were here, I, I wish you were here. I think we got the dub if you have been here with your glide bait because I lost a big one on a glide bait. I think if you were here, you would have grabbed them. I went to try boat flipping them. And you have probably caught a couple monsters yourself. Sounds like I probably would have just got a damn hook in my hand and we would have got eighth and <laughs> went home with her tail <laughs> between her legs. That Tuesday nighter on Kentucky Lake, of, well, a few weeks ago now, it was pretty fun. We, uh, I better, better tell this story. Brad and I launched at Kentucky Lake like around noon one day and uh, ran into a, a local hammer there, Hartman. He's like, yeah, there's a Tuesday nighter just recruiting. Like, yeah, I'll take these guys 50 bucks real quick. <laughs> he was right. Um, he was right. Yeah, we're like, what time is it? And he's like, ah, oh, six till 10. It got dark at eight. It's her night derby. And <laughs> that was interesting. We were not set up for night derby. And I think you had a flashlight taped to your trolling motor. I know I did. And yeah, it was, uh, it was a shit show for sure. And we didn't do too bad for our first derb on Kentucky, I don't think. Yeah. Bumped a couple once the sun went down. A couple night largies. <laughs> <laughs> the chatterbait. The chatterbait was king after the dark. Then the snake scared us away. Yeah. The big blade chatterbait is a night weapon. Yeah, we shouldn't let that out in case we have to do another night derb. Oh. Oh, well, we'll get Ginge to edit her out. Well, we got a good show yeah. tonight, bud. We got a, an in interesting deal. Um, Raz won the pro side of we the Wheeler Lake Open, stop number four. And this damn vagrant Aussie we've been toting around all year <laughs> won the co-angler side. And Brad and I both room with them. We're all travel partners. There's four of us together. And she's going to be a party tonight. I'm not going to – I had him on my podcast on Get the Net last week and – I blew a little bit of smoke up their ass and you know, I, the gloves are off tonight though. We're just going right. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What can you say? I mean, a little background story, the Aussie, I think somehow he found us through Gussie or who knows how he found us, but uh, yeah, he's an interesting character and just killing it on the opens this year for sure. As a co. 
I think he taught you how to fish, didn't he, Brucey? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Now we'll get into hammering him when he shows up, Brad. Oh yeah, that's true. I got a whole bag what? of chirps for that kid, like Santa Claus I... with a sack full of chirps for him. <laughs> we've 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 had quite a grind here. I mean, so we left. We haven't been on for a while, so we did. Uh, what lake what did we do before for? Wheeler? Well, we did. Uh, we we Toledo. It was beef. Yeah, it was before uh, Virginia, right? Really? Yeah. So, I mean, Virginia was an interesting derby. You did really well there. I did well the first day and bombed the second day. And then we went uh, went freelancing to a trailer in Kentucky where you got stung by a red hornet, you know? Yeah. We, yeah, that we was learned, interesting. Yeah, we learned how to glide bait fish in one day. We're pretty much experts on that. Yeah, we pretty much identity thieved Matt Robertson's life. He was at Lay Lake and threw us the keys to the to the trailer, and we just moved on in because there was only two weeks between events or a week and a half, whatever it was. And uh, Brad took me to to Matt's barber, who's a beauty, dialed everything up, classic barber shop, plenty of good banter there. It was like a pretty much constant R rated podcast. Got dialed yeah. up there, ate at his restaurant every night, fished his holes every day, used his baits, <laughs> all his big fancy baits. It was good. Yeah, we were. Maddie's living the I dream kinda, out there. That's a beautiful place. Oh, yeah. I mean, the elites have it pretty good. You know, we got a little taste of it, which makes me hungrier to get there for sure. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, we got to circle back to the Wasp. That was my first first morning there. Got in late the first night, I think. And I woke up and was welding up a coffee and I just felt a little tingle in my arm. I looked down, there's like a little bit of a welt there. I look up and there's a damn hornet, like half the size of my pinky finger and just redder than a baboon's ass. Like, I don't, I don't have, it was like that. We got bees or, or little yellow jacket wasps and that's it. I was looking at that and my whole damn arm swole up. I was like running for the Benadryl before I perished or I didn't know what was going to happen. It was all good though. She came out in the wash. Oh, and you yeah. had run it today. You grossed me out with the picture. Uh, that was this morning. I got up early to go fishing. I'm taking, I'm staying in Alabama. I get yeah. up, I'm at a VRBO. I get up to go out bass fishing this morning. I hopped in the shower. I got out of the shower and, drying myself off and i kind of same thing i felt this like bite on my arm i'm like what the hell bee must have got me i fling open the towel and there's a god dang scorpion on the floor (laughs) here i am (laughs) oh yeah it was uh yeah i was pretty uh i called the lady who owns the house i'm like i have no like i have no like interest in scorpions i've never seen a scorpion before i don't know what they're like and i called her i'm like do they kill you or do they hurt you or how does this all work and she's like there's no scorpions in alabama i'm like bullshit i'll show you a picture of one and she did some research and i guess they're a little bit more common than she thought and she had to do research to tell you that yeah, I don't know if I believe. Well, I'm still alive, so I believe her. But uh, that was yeah, your first was, call was to your VRBO landlord. Like, yeah, what, yeah. You didn't know if you were going to perish from a Scorpio bite or not. You, well, like, I, I didn't know call the damn landlord. <laughs> yeah, it's like if a water moccasin bites you, I feel like you go to the hospital. But if a scorpion bites you, you kind of call in and see what's going on. And it was like getting a bee bite that didn't go away for like four hours, basically. And hmm. it was the creepiest little thing I've ever seen. I flushed it down a toilet. It's gone, hopefully. Hopefully there's no more. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if a scorpion bit me, I'd just wave the white flag and lay down and perish. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> that was the creepiest man. critter. I don't, I don't get as freaked out about like snakes or anything like that. But a scorpion is scary as shit. <laughs> I don't care who yeah. you are. You picked I it def- up, too. Uh, with the P 
piece of toilet paper, but I definitely will check my shoes every time I put them on down south now because I think they like to crawl in your shoes and your bags and I don't know. I mean, we got, you know, no different than the Aussie bed bug story. I mean, you gotta, <laughs> <laughs> everything down here is trying to kill you, basically. That's why I found out. Yeah. We better pull the boys in and just have, we're not going to get right yeah. into Wheeler. We got to do, I didn't realize how long it's been. We got to do a full recap. We got to get into full what's recap. been going on here. All yeah. the buzz. We haven't even talked about Poche's DQ. Now that the smoke's settled on that a little bit, maybe we'll get him fired up on that. Yeah, we better um, get him wound up again. Yeah. We got a lot of stuff right. to talk about. Okay. I think okay, we'll stick out around. There. Everyone will see you on the other side of the uh, commercials here. There's a moment when you're faced with a challenge, and just solving the problem isn't good enough. Even if that means breaking the rules and shredding apart conventional ways of thinking. All in the name of creating something truly remarkable. With this much control at its command, we didn't stop with just one. We created two incredible trolling motors. Introducing the new Power Pole Move brushless trolling motor. This is the mountain, and this is mountain whiskey. Unspoiled, untamed, forever wild. There's no safety net, no way down. Up here, it's just man and the mountain and his tin cup. Tin cup whiskey. Mountain whiskey. And Raz. <laughs> Whoa. Raz, you look like you're at a damn job interview. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to be all professional here. I just talked to you last week. How'd you change so much? Success. I, I don't know. It's gone right to your head. You got a plant in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> you got yeah, two free hands. I'd rather be at the warehouse right now, but that ain't going to work. So. I might get murdered by my wife. Yeah. Yeah. That happens. She's tougher than you. <laughs> yeah. She could take me down for sure. Yeah. What are she's you like doing, Augie, in a she's hotel? Like a scorpion. Or? Yeah. Scorpion. <laughs> in some super dodgy hotel in Southeast Texas. <laughs> Is it a share it, house again? Are you trying to find more bed bugs for us? No, oh, I think there's gonna be bed bugs in this one, man. Oh my god, me like I booked it the other night. Me and Scott are staying here, and yeah, she's a bit dodgy. There's not even a lot, so I had to set up like a lot for me. So, <laughs> oh boy, if you get bed bugs again, we're gonna leave you in the truck, like in <laughs> hundred degree weather, with all your clothes until they all leave. That's how Raz said he get rid of them. So it works. You're just you're gonna have to pain through that. Yeah. Golly, golly. golly. <laughs> 
Well, Brad, you're up, bud. I already talked to these clowns last week. I told I said I'm done. Uh, I'm done blowing smoke up your ass. So we're just here to uh, here to swing at you. Brad's probably got some nice things to say to you boys to the champs. <laughs> well, congratulations, obviously, Raz, for doing the impossible for sure. I stuck around and watched them weigh in, and it was pretty inspiring, honestly. And I hung out in his boat. I gave away. He didn't know it, but he was up like being a big shot and people were by his boat. I was giving out lures and stuff. A couple chatter baits, a couple crank baits, a couple rods and reels, you know. Graph I figured that's a yeah, I figured that's the least I could do. And congrats to Ozzy for making our life miserable and winning <laughs> an open. <laughs> Not boring. Oh, I was wondering where all my tackle went. I just thought the Aussie stole it. <laughs> he, <laughs> he did he did, did steal but i think he stole me i'm still missing some crankbaits aussie and some i don't know yeah. pepsi cans i guess yeah i've seen a few of those uh now, what are you doing it's yeah. high ride. <laughs> i just send him don't. a bill i'm going to aussie did your girlfriend show up to town yet no, nah, she flew oh, there in, she in like three days. Oh, that'll be nice. So on the field, Raz, what are you doing? Dallas. Oh, that'll be good. You're not even staying with us in the next one, right? No, luckily. <laughs> Thank yeah, God. luckily for us, we won't get damn bed bugs. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to have the bed bugs this time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you don't know what we're talking about, he, I don't think he actually had bed bugs, but he stays at some sketchy places in between. We get nice houses usually, usually, um, but the Aussie stays at some, I don't know, <laughs> like some wanderlust communes, some share houses. <laughs> he just shows up with like half his back is just looks like he slept on an anthill. He's like, does that look like bed bugs? We're just like, yeah, like <laughs> for sure it does. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's life on the road. And then sometimes you come back to the house and there's a guy with a one ton Ford truck and a Vex's boat stuck in the front yard too. <laughs> I mean, we have some interesting stuff go down. Man, I forgot about that one. I do didn't. not, uh, do not <laughs> drive in the grass in North Carolina after you get like eight inches of rain. No good. Don't drive in the grass anywhere in a diesel truck after it rains at all. Simple. <laughs> Wisconsin, you can. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. Well, I only buried my truck once here doing it. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky I still had my ice fishing toe strap in the truck. The yeah, damn no oven kidding. pulls up. Raz is like, you still got a toe strap? I'm stuck in the yard. Like, yeah. I had like, a big, big toe strap. If, hook it onto the Aussie's truck. The thing's like barely hanging on. <laughs> if there's He's one guy in this, this whole diesel. group that has a toe strap, it's going to be the Canadian. I'm like, Bruce, you got a toe strap? Sure do. Where you at? He thought I was at the boat ramp. I'm like, uh, kind of the front yard of the place we rented. <laughs> well, thank God your name wasn't on the VRBO, Raz. Right? Yeah, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, kiss that freaking damage deposit goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy uh, would cover it. It'll happen. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, we were going to kind of do a walkthrough of uh, – we really haven't done any since uh, since Toledo. So we went to Bugs Island. You pretty much just got stuck in the yard there. Um, I almost got a turkey. Up. I almost yeah. got a turkey in the yard. Yeah. Yeah, Brad did a little turkey hunt. He put a damn decoy in the yard like the second he showed up. Yard sales is shit all over the place. And the owner of the VRBO, I always book these places because for whatever reason, Brad can't do it. And the places he does find, you don't really want. So he shows up, first guy there, yard sales all shit in the yard, throws up a turkey decoy just as a joke. And the guy that owned the VRBO was like, of course, he showed up, sees all this stuff. It was like, oh, God, I was embarrassed. He's like, I see you got your decoy out. I was like, yeah, it's just our dumb buddy. He's like, no, no. It's like, one comes out, you take your shot. <laughs> so we're like, holy shit. He's actually going to let us. He's actually turkeys here. So 
So I tell Brad, he's got the full decoys go. We're leaving at first light and he's there trying to buy a, uh, North Carolina Turkey license online. Well, he's calling him in, <laughs> standing behind a tree. That was awesome. That was the best part of Bugs Island. Honestly, that and the, <laughs> the Turkey breast that you boiled for like seven days straight and it shriveled up to nothing. I'm like, uh, yeah, that, that sure was a bad done deal. yet? That was a bad deal, but the turkey breast turned out well. That it was turkey taste, light. It did taste awesome. You saved it. Yeah, it tastes good. good. Yeah. We could have ate that freaking pot you were boiling that turkey and you boiled it so long. <laughs> and then, well, actually, the same day Raz got stuck, I was miserable. I was coming off at dark. Had a, like, I think I had a shitty day of practice. Whatever was going on, a bunch of rain, everything was soaked. And I came back. Raz called me for a toe strap halfway back because he's stuck in the yard. So we yank him out, walk into the kitchen. Brad has a grease fire on the stove <laughs> trying to fry, fry turkey breasts. Night, it was the nicest house we had, too, until this point. Yeah, Derelux. Yeah. I would not rent a house out to us, I'll tell you that. Whoa, we got a long season yet, bud. Don't <laughs> don't go announcing that stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't think I don't think VRBO owners are paying attention to us right I now. We should not. be good. We're screwed yeah. if they are. I feel like I'm back at the jail trying to fucking keep track of you too. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be easier without the Aussie. He's the troublemaker. Yeah, it might be there to smoke it out again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, at least, like, we didn't trash, like, three frying pans. <laughs> it's the stainless steel frying pans. I, I can't use an AR. I tried it again, like, another Airbnb the other day and just smoked Oh, you tried it again? One. Three wasn't uh, enough? Aussie. There's <laughs> things called, like, Crisco, vegetable oil, butter, oil, butter. Barbecue? Maybe cook your you steak put on a, a barbecue yeah. instead of in a frying pan on a stove in June? <laughs> No exhaust fans in the whole house. Like, no. Just, that was definitely just Carl, all your fault. Does Carl let you cook in his camper or no? No way. No, he doesn't let me <laughs> in the kitchen. Carl probably doesn't let him on his property. He sent like a <laughs> probably a $2,000 medical bill there from Bugs Island. Brad took yep. the guy fishing once and what happened? Hook in my hand. Like, pretty bad. It wasn't that bad. He got You're this, just making it he got this. Yeah, he got this tiny little hook stuck in his hand and I had to spend <laughs> five hours at the hospital. During uh, official yeah. practice, too. During official practice. Ozzy owes me a trip to Australia after that. <laughs> we already had a toe strap out. We could have yanked that sucker out. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There's no way you could hold me down. I was, <laughs> that thing hurt. Yeah. I think We're... Bruce, I, I think Bruce he could have held you down. <laughs> I'll have to knock me out first. Yeah, we will. <laughs> no <would've>. problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm coming to learn that you're pretty soft, Ozzy. Um, yeah. I got a few calls. I put up a video of uh, when the wind kicked up on Wheeler. We were in the big lawns, <laughs> and it was, it was waves blowing against current, and they were sharp-ass little two-and-a-half-footers. Like, they were, you know, they are serious waves. Uh, and instead of or watching – kayak. Through, yeah, it's, no, no. They're big <laughs> waves. You would have speared half yeah. of them. Um, but instead of watching for logs, because all the floating stuff everywhere, the Aussie, I look over and he's just got his head buried in his lap, like saying a prayer. He's terrified. <laughs> and then when the lightning started, like, a, I don't know, maybe a different day, we sat out through a lightning storm, like stood on the, you know, near the bank for 10 minutes. And I go back out and there's still a little bit of electrical around and, he just sits down and starts pouting and said he got electrocuted through his reel. <laughs> yeah. I've had it happen before too back in Australia. It's nuts. Like, I don't know. It's like the the metal on the reel, like, you get like little sharp jabs from it when there's like electrical storm around. So I just dropped the rod straight away. I wasn't having a bar of it. <laughs> I think that was in your head because I was standing yeah. in an aluminum boat and I was fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, I. The guy in front of you is like seven and a half feet tall. I'm pretty sure he's going to get hit first. <laughs> oh, yeah. I rigged our new boat up, Ozzy. Oh, you did? Did you yeah. rig it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, from scratch, bud. 
Well, I've rigged everyone to date. <laughs> it's been good enough to teach your dumb ass how to catch a bass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, I'm going to wear some chirps, though. I got the uh, – I got the super like tall, like the loser crappie mount. Oh, you <laughs> For, did? Yeah, I put another live scope on the big crappie mount, and it's like she's damn near eye to eye with me. I did look like an idiot graphs? out there. Yeah, yeah. There's some new graphs on her. Wait. Took her out for the maiden tonight. Yep. Yeah, could have used her for that. The Aussie's uh, yeah. an installer in. Australia, he says. Yeah, he's a pretty yeah, good run deal like, on <laughs> We run like a Garmin dealership back home, so and we just pretty much fit out sounders and rewire boats and do battery systems. But luckily, I haven't had to do too much of it here. <laughs> You've had to do some stuff to Brad's. Yeah, Brad, I had to help Brad out. <laughs> yeah, he installed that new powerhouse and the running gun charger. No problem yeah. since that sucker went in. Hey, bud. No, that thing is mint, dude. I mean, <laughs> since Ozzy messed with my Garmin, though, my side imaging's all messed up, so I can't wait to see him again. <laughs> Ozzy, you want to come? You want to come rig up all my powerhouses this weekend? Nah, I'll be right. I'll be, I'll be taking a holiday in Dallas. <laughs> I taught you, you how to cat too, right? cricket, and you're not going to come help me. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you'll love them. That's one of the things I was doing was put like I put in. Did you get the whole charging system too? The running guns, Raz? Yeah, I've got everything coming. Yeah, nice. that's wicked. You just drive like I fished for a couple hours today, and I just drove home, and everything was at a hundred percent. Yeah, like I think it, honestly, I think the way their system works, if you forgot to plug your boat in, you would be fine the next day. Yeah, Absolutely. you'd be fine for like a week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's good. There's a lot of amperage coming off those motors. Every, so everyone in the house has powerhouse. Ozzy, you got it on your 10-speed? Yeah, mate. Got her in the Toyota Tundra. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> that speed. thing would start on fire. <laughs> you should bring your own graph, Ozzy. You should bring your own live scope. Pole I'll system, ice fishing shuttle. Set it off at the back, little pole and everything. <laughs> Yeah, lay some flex on these guys. I got an extra console from my Pro V Bass too. You should bring that too. Just yeah. set set the pace. Like you can't be getting pushed around anymore. You're a champion. You're a three time co angler, yeah. track earner. You're the anchor of the house. Enough <laughs> enough. Yeah, these these bloody pro anglers, they don't listen to me. I, I try and talk them into going to different places, but yeah. <laughs> Man, I got to say, my co from Wheeler was, uh, damn, I can't remember his name. Best guy ever. Uh, hopefully he's listening to this because he, he was a good co. He was there to learn. Good time. Yeah. Co-angler co shout out. Since the Aussies always accusing me of being mean to my partners. And... <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to start the coalition against co's anymore, Brucey, or what? No, that was that was always your thing, Brad. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I did. I've had I, great. Yeah. I've had great co's this year too, like outstanding. So I might go easier on it. Yeah. You guys have had co anglers? Yeah. <laughs> shut up, Brad. <laughs> shut up, Brad. I, I, I'll be honest. And I think we talked about it on the last one. I put in a formal <laughs> submission to the uh, um, Angler Relations Committee after having three tournaments straight of double co-anglers every time i was just like how i i cannot compete if you know if it's not balanced so i put it in and um talked to hank and talked to uh to chris they emailed me back and said like yeah they're gonna they're gonna look at it. and then there's no way to perfectly balance it it's just never gonna work out but um they're at least gonna take a, a rough look and and balance her off a little bit and it's it's balanced off since then because that was that was pretty wild for a few there. It wasn't even yeah. getting the co-anglers at that point. It was just I was getting so pissed off that you guys never had them. No one ever <laughs> had them. And I was would always have them. And the night before the tournament, I'd just get irate. But to be honest, like I'm sure they could help me at times. There's places where I know they, you know, it's not gonna hurt having a co-angler and and yeah, but it's whether they help you or hurt you, it still should be balanced for everyone as close as it can, I think. Right. 
Yeah, <clears throat> I think Raz okay. should probably get twice as many now that he's won. I mean, I'm fine you know, he's a winner. You could guide those like Ozzy to championship again. Yeah, yeah well, two times yeah, zero, that... still zero, Brad. He gets twice <laughs> as many true. as nothing. <laughs> Last year, I was a real good guide. I think, uh, huh, like five out of the nine tournaments last year like my co-anglers caught one over five pounds like and i never caught one over five so wow uh, you're a good guy grass i'm a terrible guy this year i'm just being selfish now oh good <laughs> i heard tommy is the next keith honeycutt i don't know if anyone knows who <laughs> keith honeycutt is but he's a legendary Legendary cutoff, cutthroat co angler. <laughs> I'm Tommy's, a, got I'm a, a, Tommy's got a YouTube channel. Go check out his video from Toledo Bend and give it a good watch. It's a good video, high production value. Um, just a, a good watch. But Brad and I had a chance to armchair quarterback it and we called you out on a couple of questionable casts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know he's my friends. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's a couple, couple of bad casts. Eh? It's, I, you get to like the point where you're sort of getting a little bit itchy and it's pretty bad, but um, yeah, I can oh, definitely yeah. yeah. You were with Trip Nuge and he's probably the nicest guy I've met. Yeah. He was, so far, so. he was really good to fish with. He's a weapon. Yeah. Uh, I would I would consider Tommy more like Bubbles. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, like he's the You're bubble, the only one wearing so. glasses here. I know, but still, he reminds me of Bubbles. I'm I'm hooked on that show. Thanks, Brucey. Yeah, I got the Brad more on trailer I watch, the more I in a trailer. Me. <laughs> What's the other oh, one? Shoot. Uh, What's that other Canadian comedy? Letter Kenny. Yeah, Letter, Letter Kenny. Kenny. You get him hooked on that one yet? No, we were watching Trailer Park Boys because we were in a trailer. Oh, well, Letter Kenny. That's a camper. You got to you got to watch Letter Kenny too. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, so anyway, Raz, Brad, I don't think the Aussies like bubbles. No, I was just giving him a hard time. No, he doesn't I mean, even like cats. He yeah, doesn't. Bubbles is nice. The Aussies cut throat. <laughs> cut off cut throat. <laughs> He'll step on your throat for a 14 incher. <laughs> yeah. Bag the bag. <laughs> and he'll leave you with a dirty house because he has to go to a tackle shop i've learned that about him <laughs> yeah he's got zero responsibilities at all wakes up in the morning oh mate i gotta go to scottsboro tackle <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i had to get in get in early while they sell the plastics but now me and brad yeah. stay back we cleaned up the last house pretty good yeah pretty good I think you better, still have you better have. My name was on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that means you got to book all the houses from now on because you won. No, I know you're superstitious. No. I'm out. That, yeah, maybe I'll, I'm really going to have to put a circle around what town we're staying in next time. <laughs> <laughs> you're four minutes away from Gunnersville and an uh, hour and 24 minutes from Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. <laughs> Well, the next yeah, house like there's a Chad spawn where you had to be on the lake at first light or anything. Yeah, you just get up early. It's like salmon yeah. fishing. Get up at three o'clock, <clears throat> be on the water by like five because you got to drive an hour and a half. No worries. Yeah, no, that's easy. You. Easy for the guy to say he only has to practice for two and a half days. Well, instead of I had five. A, I had a driver with me. I took a nap in the morning. <laughs> Oh, that's a good Makes call. Sense. Tommy yeah, doesn't even like he'll just get, he'll make his breakfast and then he'll just get in the truck. Like won't unplug the boat, <laughs> won't do anything for you. And then when you put her on the trailer, mm. he'll just attend to all his rods, all his reel, <laughs> make sure all his shit is tight. And he'll just leave me. Like I'll be putting transom savers on and fighting snakes <laughs> out of the live well and tuning everything up, and he'll just be ready. All his gears right as rain. <laughs> That's yeah. right. 
Then he likes to put the parking <laughs> brake on and yeah. when you should well, never use the parking brake. I had to make sure Brad wasn't leaving his car and running at the ramp again. <laughs> oh, that's true. Hey, I got I got the Aussie's new pro. Was, I was out fishing No No Jojo and uh, mm -hmm. he lost his GoPro off the boat one day when we're out there. <laughs> but I think him and Ozzy would be a perfect match. Like, I think they would get it done. Yeah. So, Ozzy, you got a new guy. You don't have Brucey anymore. You have no, no Jojo. <laughs> oh, Ozzy, as, as far as draws go, how lucky <clears throat> do you think you've been? So good. Like, I've had good guys at every tournament, and they've all been like super friendly and they've like helped me get, get on fish, tell me what they're throwing, all that sort of stuff. So, I've been pretty lucky. It's been crazy. Like, you have a look at Lukey at that last comp. Like that was his first one. He come down and like his his angles are both good guys, I guess. But they just went on fish and for two days in a row, he didn't get to get a chance to even have a crack. Yeah, no, and he was a good angler too. Like he was whipping my ass through, like when we we're up fishing up shallow and finesse fishing around. Yeah. It's just it's such <clears> a <throat> I don't know. There's a lot of lot. Obviously, there's a lot of skill involved. Like to be as consistent as you have been, but. Had some good damn draws too. How was it? You said you went fishing with Jack York the other day. Yeah, yeah, we went out at uh, like Nacogdoches, which is like East Texas, and um, we didn't get any big ones, but he just sort of he gave me like a rundown on how to like graph fish and find fish on the sander, what to look for, and we caught a couple on deep plugs and like worms and stuff. So it was a really good day to learn a heap of stuff, and he he knows his stuff, so because he's a guide in East Texas and all that. So but, yeah. yeah, good day in the water with him. Sweet. You must not have been that bad of a co-angler if a guy took you out after. Yeah. Hey, Andy offered to, for me to come fish with him at the next one for practice, so I can't be that bad. Well, he can have you. <laughs> <clears throat> Has your medical bill showed up at Carl's yet, though, seriously? Yeah. Like, I'm going through, like, mad troubles with it. So my travel insurance is asking for, like, an invoice from the hospital. This is for the hook yeah. in the hand, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And a rabies so, shot, or what did you get, a tetanus shot? I had to get a tetanus, yeah. And um, so pretty much I didn't have my wallet on me. I had it at home and rocked up to the hospital, and I'm like, I can't pay for this. Just send it to this address, and I'm like, sweet. So they just sent Carl's, Carl Jockamson's address. <laughs> the only place <laughs> I can get stuff sent. But the paper just said, like, please contact this person to get your bill. So I contacted them and it just gave me a way to pay and it didn't give me an invoice and travel insurance is asking for like a proper invoice and I can't get the proper invoice. So I just had How like a strength it? drop. It was like 1400 bucks. Man, you vaporized yeah. your whole check. Yeah. Because <laughs> people don't account. understand. If you're not from the US, uh, like just look at, when the Aussie and I are each getting checks, just look at our faces and just watch the disappointment. Like if you're in the check line, cause they knock, they have to take a 30% uh, tax treaty benefit off. So whatever, out of the 12, you won, you had eight left, you busted your truck, put a hook in yep. your hand, probably had three or four cocktails in uh, Nashville, a couple of <laughs> fakes, paid a couple damage deposits on some stainless steel pans and you're back to being <laughs> broke as all. Well. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna rock up back in Australia and pretty much have nothing. So, <laughs> you got a trophy. Well, at least you have a trophy. You have a trophy. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And the car that sort of runs half well, so not too bad. <laughs> yeah, you're styling. What's going on, Raz? Y'all is all the <sighs> smoke started to clear yet from the big W or where are we at? Uh I don't know. Haven't even really thought about anything. I got home and started guiding and I've been busy so got the salmon boat in got that thing ready to rock uh went smallmouth fishing today cracked out a bunch of those life's good yeah what do you think about going to Where, Oklahoma I don't know we'll figure it out it's pretty hard to leave the north this time of year yeah, the fishing's so good here. Like, the weather's as good as it gets. 
Oh, it's hot here. It's like 80 today. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's that's hot, hot up here. Too. That's hot for here. It was close to that here, which is cooking, but We'll still. be praying for 80 next week when we're in Oklahoma and it's like 95 or who knows what it's going to be. It's going to be hot. Yeah. yeah, I might actually perish. Like I was thinking about filling each of my live holes up with ice and just sticking my head in there like a damn <laughs> ostrich every, every hour. Or so, because like at yeah. Wheeler, I had to swim. I had to take poison swims just to the big. The big rig was overheating here. Like my rod was going <laughs> over. <laughs> I wouldn't jump in Wheeler Lake if I was dying, dude. Yeah. Between the poison and the snakes, no way. No, I know. I felt bad for my damn bait. <laughs> throw my lure in there <laughs> you could light me on fire and i wouldn't jump in that place yeah it's the only place bass are happy to be in your live well yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. <laughs> take me somewhere big else. shout out to wheeler lake though gorgeous place <laughs> gorgeous it was, place. it was a fun fishery just got to get past the cat food factory and it was a fun fishery for one of us and that was you and the, or two of us you and the Aussie. Yeah, I think the Otherwise, Aussie had fun. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think it was that fun. But <laughs> no, that was the that was my least favorite place I've been to so far. Really? Yeah, I yeah, kind of liked it. I bet yeah. you want to go back. Yeah, yeah. We could go like up the road to Gunnersville. I'd be happy going back there. Well, Brad's only in there. Alabama now. Brad's like, I like that area. I get down to Alabama the other day. I was like, I would rather go to Alaska. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want anything to do with Alabama. <laughs> you know, All like the Alabama. surrounding states I enjoy. I do not like Alabama. Brad's the Thursday yeah. nighter champ. Yeah, no, Tuesday Sunday. nighter. Oh, boy, Monday, Monday. No. And his ass in the Tuesday nighter. He Is won some one day. I think night? it was a, a church tournament or a kids derby or some one day he won. Yeah, I didn't last night. I didn't win. No, those guys cleaned my clock. But yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Gunnersville is a really, really good lake. You two were down here earlier this year, but mm. they freaking love chickens on Gunnersville and big glide baits, which is awesome. Yeah, that lake is wicked, and the surrounding of that lake is wicked too. Like the waterfront and just yeah. all. Uh, I don't know. It's like bass fishing city. I shouldn't it's shit talk nice Alabama area. too much. I do really like it. I just suck. It's a nice, I do. nice area. When I got off stage the second day, I told everyone I can't wait to get out of Alabama. You should have heard all the booze I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why would you say that? I said Wheeler Lake. I'm wheeling her back on the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, I got any Yeah, and then you stayed for three weeks, Brad. Yeah, I had an FXR photo shoot with some really nice people. And then, uh, yeah, I just stayed. I got to figure out this ledge bite deal. and Yeah, you know, just in time new. for uh, a lake that's nothing like it. <laughs> uh, I guarantee I will fish Gunnersville in a turn big tournament someday. So it's yeah. not wasted. No, no, the whole TVA. Like, you spend your time learning that. Yeah, I mean that's where everyone goes all the time, and I mean I was gonna go pre-fish that one we have in September, but I thought that'd be completely worthless. Yeah, uh, the te- yeah Watts oh, Bar, yeah. Go catch eleven pounds of smallmouth <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> I'd right. sign on the dotted line and keep her on the bunks for that. Hey, good news is you can boat flip all of those on a spin and pull. Yeah. You can boat flip anything on a spin and pull. Oh, I, did a, I bo- did a walleye <clears throat> thing tonight, uh, some media thing for Lake of the Woods, and not five, six pound walleyes, just boat flop them. 12 pound fluoro spinny pulls. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yeah. I boat flipped six credit. and a half pound brown bass this morning, first one of the day, and cranked them in and I got him like to the rub rail and I had to reel down again and give him the good <laughs> yeah but, so, Sturgeon Bay Carp yeah Sturgeon Bay Carp god I miss those things me too they've Ozzie, been uh, you, 
they've been pretty bitchy lately. Yeah, I wonder why. They've all got 15 hook holes in their face. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> They're just being weird. Huh. Yeah. It's the Aussie, weird said, like the Aussie said he could whoop my ass from the bank here, so I'm still waiting for him to show up. Yeah, I'll be there with my one spinning <laughs> rod. Hurry up. <laughs> The Aussie's got nice gear. Him. Gusty just handed him all his. He's got like all super high. He's got nicer, nicer stuff than any of the competitors. That's for sure. <laughs> did you, Aussie? Did you tell Gussy you broke one of his nice Loomises or no? Yeah, he he seemed right with it, but it was only over text. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't given well, he hates you yet. forever. I guarantee. Yeah. You, so. <laughs> I blackmailed him and I took a picture of it right away and sent it to Gossie. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I can't believe you let this guy use your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like a brand new G Loomis rod, crank that rod. I was using it for like 10 minutes and it bloody snapped. Yeah, I'm sure it was the rod's fault. <laughs> yeah. I heard it I heard it crack across the rafter on the back of my boat. <laughs> yeah, I saw him the night before beating uh beating a copperhead snake with it out of the eaves trough and when he was surprised <laughs> that it broke. <laughs> snake pole, baby. <laughs> oh, boy. Are you coming back to do the derbies next year, Ozzy, or what? I know I know you don't like answering these questions, but that was kind of your plan. Like, what's going on? Are you coming back yeah, next year? Well, Full throttle? Charlie's Angels 2? My, like, my end goal, my goal has always been to come in 2025 as a boater, so... Um, this is just sort of like a bit of like a learning curve sort of thing. But um, if my car didn't play up, I was going to come back and do a few small mount tournaments and all that. But see how the funds look. But um, yeah, I don't think I'll make it next year. But 2025, I'll definitely be here and give it a good crack. Yeah, good. Everything will be totally different. Yeah, exactly. All the tricks I've showed you will be obsolete. <laughs> yeah, they won't eat wacky words anymore. <laughs> yeah, they won't eat Gary anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> live scope will be all virtual reality you just have to run a helmet from the boat ramp yeah. or however it yeah. works remote control yeah Put on your goggles <laughs> yeah you're gonna show up with your spinner bait and finish 188th in points <laughs> of 187. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a steep landing curve for that's for sure but gotta give it a crack so no nah, you've hey. already overcome that You've seen I got a, lot. a boat you can buy. Oh, What's that? I got a boat sitting here you can buy. How much you want for it? <laughs> how, how much you got? Out. Let's hear, <laughs> Raz. You got a good audience to sell your uh, your big Vexus. Let's hear your, right. your best pitch in under fifty words. I got a twenty twenty two Vexus. I fished out of last year. It's all decked out with the best hummingbird Minn Kota products raptors eight words left loaded get rid of her for 86 86 australian that's a good deal bud better yeah. jump on that yeah right <laughs> Eight thousand six hundred. yeah that's <laughs> about what uh your australian money is worth compared to american money you if you that. told him you'd sell it to him for 8600 raz he'd offer you eight thousand. yeah i can't oh, do I it right? no he would offer you eight hundred and sixty dollars. He always <laughs> drops at zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he'd hand me eighty six dollars in Australian money. There you go, mate. Well, I'll play the rest of I already gave, already gave you the five dollar deposit, so yeah. I yeah, you did pay part of your rent last time in Aussie dollars. <laughs> They're worth about as much as a single sheet of single ply toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> pretty rough but at least the conversion rate's good when you win a bit of money over here but yeah yeah you'll have a good tax return season too mind you i sent mine in like three months ago because i think i i think i got hosed like eight or nine grand last year just from the treaty tax from those two yeah. opens so, oh. <laughs> like that's my whole like it's my whole season you know like yeah. the rest of the season so it's yeah. I mean, you got her send her sm snail mail to the IRS, and nothing happens fast. But so no, I'm gonna hand it one. to you guys for like coming here to fish, and you guys get screwed like that on on winnings yeah. and lose a third of it right away. 
It's crazy. Yeah, the key is just don't win anything and you're fine. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, you're not. I'm on that program. It's not fine. <laughs> <laughs> Brad has been sampling. He's letting us know. Insider edition, it's not great. It's not yeah, but you've had enough no. top tens. We talked about this on my podcast last week. We we had some good words about you. You're yeah. just you're, it's going to connect sooner or later. I sure hope so. Yep. No, you'll figure Ra- it out. Yep. Ras, how uh, can you like when you go out on the bay now? Are you too busy signing autographs, or how does that work? No, nobody likes no? me up here, so nobody's asking me for my autograph. Did Holy did Holy Christmas like say you're a pretty good fisherman now or no? Uh, I haven't really talked to him. Oh, I got yeah. I got to be up there a little bit more though, a little higher. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. Yeah. You're you're I, better than okay now. Eventually, I'll figure it out. I figured it out. You're in twenty eighth, five hundred nine gotta, points. Got to figure it out some more. That's a. Uh... What is that? That's about a 52nd place average. Everyone said coming into this at 50th place average would work. Um, 50th place average right now is 25th place. I still think a 50th is going to do it. Yeah. What do you think? Looking at the points race now, God damn, they're killing them though. That John Garrett is, I mean, he can fall on his face a couple times now and still be fine. And he does not do that often. He just missed last year. He had, I think, he had two big bombs, and outside of that, everything was like in the top thirty. Yeah, he's a good stick. Like, there's a lot of good sticks up there. I don't know. Yeah, the only good thing is Kenta Kamara is in second, and he's already qualified. So, yeah, I don't really worry about that stuff. Like, you just go fish and do the best you can. That's all you can worry about. Yeah. How yeah. uh, how big a how big a party are we gonna have at the classic next year? Ooh. Woo. Probably a pretty good one. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. Like that is like it's awesome to win and get that money and get that trophy, but the biggest carrot comes next year. Like that is it's a lifetime goal right there. Yeah, for sure. I right? Like I said, it still hasn't sunk in. Like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to it. Like, I've been dreaming of that since I was a little kid. And, yeah, going to the Classic and, like, half of Wisconsin's coming with. So, it's going to be fun. I already have yeah. a bunch of people booking houses. And they're like, well, where should we stay? I'm like, uh, I I don't know. Like I haven't even thought about it. Stay in Tulsa somewhere. I know that's where it's at. That's all I know. Yeah, don't stay at the lake. No, it's like an hour, no, then you're, an hour and a half away. I think. Yeah, you got like twenty seven chances of getting pulled over between Tulsa and the lake. It's that far away. So stay in town. Yeah let let the bass come to you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going next year, Tommy, or are you just going to stay? Yeah, we're going to all come over and have a bit of a crack. But... Yeah. yeah you, could bring that, you could bring that Toyota over and start an Uber service for the party. Buddy. Yes. <laughs> the taxi runs in the lake. Yeah, he'll he'll put a cap on it, fill everyone up. They'll show up all bruised and beaten, and he'll charge them <laughs> twice as much. Yeah. <laughs> His insurance fees. Yeah. Oh, boy. Brad, you're going to ICAST in July, you said? Yes, sir. You Tell guys aren't? No, none of us are going to ICAST. We got to hear. Well, you keep t- everyone keeps telling me ICAST. That's where it's all at. For Everyone says that's where you go to get sponsors. And then all the people that actually sign sponsors say that's where all the guys go and wear tournament jerseys and ask for deals. What's yeah, the actual, you know- what's the inside? Uh, last year I saw a very, I mean, like Kevin Van Dam wears this jersey, but I heard the same thing. Like you get all these high school, college kids in there asking for sponsors that, that wasn't the case last year when I was there, it was pretty, you know, I don't know if they let 
all you know it's not open open to the public only one day so icast is cool i mean you have a show it's not very you know it's pretty chill at four o'clock i think we start drinking beer and at four in the morning you go to bed like where all the fun happens is at the bar afterwards like yeah. all the people that are in the industry that you want to know are there and out and having fun and it's just you know you meet a lot of good connections you know like last year i met patterson from sims obviously i'm with fxr so that doesn't really equate but man what a what a great guy patterson is and you know still talk to him now and you know, there's all kinds of guys like that. DQ's there, you know, Quinn, he's there having fun. And, you know, you just, you're around the right people that usually you can't get near. So, yeah. You just mentioned two of my four favorite run ins from the classic. Yeah. It's like the classic <laughs> in that sense, oh, but, but it's a little more of a, a party, I would say. Like the ICAST is more of a, social event you know the classic everyone's worried you know who's winning what's going right. on you know where okay, well, i make cast... a little more sense to me why you're going to florida in july <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i i did I, I, yeah it, it's it's a good time like you learn like last year i learned how to uber i didn't know how to uber until last year either i was gonna <laughs> perish or uber so <laughs> 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 well, I'm glad you figured it out, bud. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we're, yeah, I guess it's time to start. Oh God, already start looking at next year and buttoning things down and everything. And, and one thing Brad and I have talked about and had a chance to reflect on, on our time in, in Matt Robertson's trailer was <laughs> that we had a chance to get on social media a little bit. And we, we sniffed out a lot of guys that, you know, are self-proclaimed proclaimed pros and everything like that and found that they had a lot of followers on Instagram, um, dug a little bit deeper. And there's so many of these folks right now with buying fake Instagram followers and paying to have like the blue star certification. <laughs> Can you believe that shit, Tommy? Grass? That's crazy. That's How much do you to get the blue stuff? 40 bucks a month, bud. I'll be keeping an eye on yours. Because before, yeah. like the only people I'd know with a blue star would be like Mike Richards, who won the Stanley Cup. And maybe like, I don't know, maybe Carl and Gussie have them. Or like Fighter or someone. F and I know and Fighter. Then that and so now you scroll through the list and you see like Pawn Fisherman 64, blue star. <laughs> And it's it's like okay that that's not a huge deal that just whatever might highlight your name a little bit, and I feel like an idiot. We're grown men talking about Instagram followers, but that is, you know, that's that's one of the metrics that a lot of companies look at, and there's a lot of people just buying them, and you can yeah. it's a real easy tell. Like I spent enough time on, you know, uh, with work on social media and I've been around it enough. It's, it's very simple to tell if, if someone's buying them or not. And I I'm looking at it. Like it's almost like a form of fraud. Yeah. That's, I mean, you gotta have like <clears throat> those fake people don't mean anything. And I know like everybody sponsors, look at your total number of followers and like, Oh, sometimes it, just feels like that's all they care about but like i have like 3200 followers but they're all real people like most of them will comment on a post and wouldn't you rather have real people than all the fake ones that just i don't know i don't understand it well the the bottom line i mean for people out there doing this it's hurting it's hurting everyone that's trying to do it legit because there is I mean, I talk with sponsors all the time and they want 30,000, 50,000 followers, which if you're a bass fisherman, I mean, 50,000 legit followers, I mean, you're at 5% of the bass fishermen in the world. I mean, yeah. if that. So 
you know, they give, you know, all these people doing it the wrong way. It's giving these sponsors like ideas like, no, you're not good enough. You only have 10,000. But if I only have 10,000 and 20% of my 10,000 are relating to every post I do or reel, is that better than the guy with 100,000 that gets 0.001% or the guy with 16,000 that gets 200 likes per post like that. There needs to be some kind of system there to, to help out the guys that are guys or ladies that are doing it the right way and not paying for the followers, you know? Right. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, I it's something everyone's say that, hear. like, say it. no, no say like it. I, I hate social media. Like I don't like, I go on there and I post what I need to post, but like, I can't go on social media and sit there and look at it because all it is, is a bunch of whiners and I run, I don't know, 1200 to 1500 people through my guide service this season. And I believe like that's more important. And that's like my selling point with any sponsor that, these people actually get to touch the stuff hands on all the products I'm affiliated with. They have a good day. They're going to go to the store, buy what I promoted, and they're going to tell 20 of their friends. Yeah. We went and caught all these small malls on a X wrap or pick a bait, whatever. And throwing it on this route. Like this is what you have to have to catch them. And they go and tell their friends and it just, it spirals and like I believe that sells more than having a bunch of Instagram or Facebook followers and having a name on a jersey on a tournament stage. That's just my feelings on it. Yeah. I'd be surprised if it sold more, but it is definitely a major chunk of the pie that well, people are like, looking yeah. at. They're not looking at that as a metric. They're just right. looking at some pond hopper sixty four with a blue star and forty thousand followers where every single post is only an ad, not one single piece of, of uh, genuineness, quality information, comedy, uh, entertainment, just straight ad, and then they'll have eight likes with 20,000 followers. Yeah. <laughs> that exactly. happened. Like Brad and I went deep. We took a deep dive, and we found some deep fakes, and there's a lot. And if you're... Um, this is a public service announcement. If you're, if you're a sponsor looking at someone, um, man, I've, I've spent enough time on like I'm trained in, in, in open source on, on various platforms. I've spent enough time to, to be able to sift through the bullshit and you really have to, if you don't have someone checking it for you, then do yourself a favor and just kind of look at the numbers and see how they stack up against someone legit, like a, a Carl or a Gutti or or a Tommy Wood for that matter. So it's, it. I don't know, something that need to be said. Hey, Brad, especially if you roll into ICAS is coming up and all this. <laughs> Plenty <laughs> of that going on. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah, see on Instagram I mean, too, they got like, <clears throat> if you go into the data, it says, it shows you how many like profiles interact with like your profile or your post, like how many people engage with it. And like yeah. sponsors should probably be looking at that rather than how many followers you've got because you can have like forty thousand legit followers, but maybe only ten thousand are actually interacting with your profile as well. Like, yeah, you get lost. Yeah, there's, there's a lot so of other crazy. metrics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now you guys are both fine. Each one derbs. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> right on. Should be rolling in it next year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's hard on the YouTube though. He'll do fine. That was the that was one thing I noticed a few years ago is that, uh, and being on the other side of it in the industry and and actually looking at the metrics on Shopify and the, um, you know how everything sells. YouTube is legit. It's a legit platform for, yeah, um, yeah. for user interaction and for bottom line sales. So, uh, Raz. Raz Lutner outdoors next year. <laughs> Maybe I gotta put a GoPro in my boat now. No, no. you're on mine all the time, bud. The crowd loves you. 
Yeah, I'm going to make you edit all of it if I got to start doing this YouTube stuff. I know nothing about that. I can't even edit my own. All the swear words I got to try to find the chop <laughs> out and take an 11 year old watches it. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's a good editor, though. We should get him. Hired. I'm just doing it on my phone. It's like my phone is like overheating when I'm editing. It's pretty full on. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a good job for doing it from your phone. Yeah, I got, there's like a program called Splice, and it like it has everything you need on there. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple once you get used to it. But yeah, you sure you're you looking at you your GoPro videos? That, so <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're looking at your GoPro videos on your phone and it's overheating or something? Yeah. Else? <laughs> yeah, now I'm looking at the guy, bro. Step. All right, that's good. Uh, it's overheating because he's got his Navionics going, recording all the tracks everywhere yeah. he's ever been with every pro that's taken yeah. it. So when he comes Take back from full Australian world domination, he's gonna have everyone's yeah. juice. <laughs> got every spot in the like now. Yeah, I'll gladly send you my Wheeler Lake waypoints, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, well. Well, well yeah. yeah, what we got to ask Raz. I mean, we're all affiliated with Rapala, so except for Tommy, but uh, what was the juice out there, bud? Like, what, what was getting it done out on the old crap hole wheeler? <laughs> <laughs> no, those uh, they're coming out with some new plastics, and man, I've been using that stuff a lot this year since DQ sent us some. And uh, the uh, freeloader on a bladed jig yep. is the deal. Like, I've been a believer in that thing since when did I go to Gunnersville, March. Um, Thrown a lot. I've caught a lot of fish on it. And then, uh, like, that cleanup craw, flipping that, dragging it on a, on a rugby head, however you want to fish it. Like, that thing's legit. Yeah, that's how I caught most of my bass. I caught a few on a drop shot with just a robo worm on it. Um, you know, when they slowed down and got a little finickier. But uh, yeah, that stuff is legit. And there's some more shapes and colors that uh, nobody's even seen yet. And that stuff is all going to come out at ICAST. So keep an eye out for it. It's legit stuff. Like I used it up here in smallmouth country and I've caught bass down south on it won a tournament down south on it so if if i can win a derby on wheeler lake on that stuff like it must be legit <laughs> yeah no doubt like it I, I mean i've been messing around with it too for when it all year and it's amazing how good a job they did with it and the colors are fabulous the plastics like a different kind of plastic that i've ever seen with you know, the durability of it, the weight of it. And I mean, it's going to take the fishing world by storm. I think Wheeler won down here on Gunnersville with that same deal. And it'll yeah. be, it'll be a good year. Yeah. It's crazy. Like you don't even have to super glue that stuff on a jig. Like it sticks, like it adheres to it. It's, I mean, you can put a swim bait on and go out on, Green Bay and catch 30 small malls on one swim bait and it's like all still intact. It's crazy. Yeah. It's legit. Tommy, Are what you was your wild done now? <laughs> What's that? What's that? Are you guys done now or you want to keep going? Can we talk about my rod and reel and my line and all that nope. stuff too? None of that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, we don't do that here, bud. I don't know why Brad asked, <laughs> even asked that question other than the plug wrap because we've already heard a million other things. Um, everyone knows red line hooks are good. Everyone knows Rapala pumps a quality product. Um, Tommy, what are you even using? You leave all this shit all over my boat, these Samiki lures and Maui gyms, and he's got all kinds of, <laughs> all kinds of exotics. <laughs> I've got... I've Maui got gyms not exotic, but. Yeah, I've got just about everything on the market that you can think of. I'm just like cutting my lures off. Tying something new on every every second, just try stuff. But yeah, it's pretty crazy trying to get your head around it all. That's because yeah. you got like too many options. Every five minutes, you're tying a new lure on. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dave, yeah, he's so settled good. in now. He knows what works now. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah it's great. Here. Like you told me that story when, uh, man, where was that? Toledo Ben, like every five minutes he's tying a bait on. He fished with me at Bugs Island. He really didn't change that much stuff. And yeah. You could tell he's settling in on some stuff he likes. He's out yeah. of bait. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've lost them all. Yeah, Toledo, I had like all these baits that I'd stacked up on the and like Gussie gave me so much stuff and I'm like, oh my god, like where do you start? So I'm like trying to fit different things into my bag and like I've just got it jam packed and then I'm out in the water, I'm like, okay, I caught a fish on that, cut that off, I'm gonna try something else now. And then it just got too deep. But like once you find out the basic stuff, it's like just keep it simple, keep colour simple and it's pretty easy yeah weird it's like someone's been telling you that all year yeah (laughs) (laughs) what are you gonna do when you have a boat like i feel like you're just gonna be in the driveway like trimming it up and down all night like just spinning (laughs) up you can barely handle six fishing rods in a tackle box like yeah you're gonna be changing your oil and tweaking your grass and i don't know (laughs) yeah that's a cute boat Back at home, you're gonna, like there's like three or four lures that you literally only catch fish on. So I'm just going to have to find those lures over here. I'll be right, but it's just yeah, um, it sounds like you're already pretty, It's pretty overwhelming the whole bass fishing scene. So yeah, he's he picks stuff you have confidence in and fish it. Yeah, it's like yeah. chatterbait. Brad likes fishing glide baits, and like I don't know why I ever have a glide bait rod on the deck of my boat because I am never gonna throw it because I've never caught one on it. You know, I have no confidence in it. Yeah, I know. I don't. I don't have much confidence in a chatter bait, and that's you know your front deck yeah, full of those same things. Same thing, like yeah, for sure. Did you catch any you on the glide there, Gunnersville? Oh, yeah. I've been, yeah. I've probably caught 20 of them on the tater hog since I've been here. Really? Any big ones? Uh, nothing over six. Oh, that's still fun, though. I a good fish. Yeah, like five, six pounders. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Don't give up Those too much juice, rods. bud. Oh, yeah. Okay. Too much juice. Woo! I got a couple of your chatterbait rods because you're the <clears throat> jackhammer master. Is this the right one? I know I didn't let you talk about your poles, but that's because I wanted to ask you this. Uh, seven foot four, medium heavy, moderate fast, envy black. Uh, yeah, that's the one. You still using the concept Z2? Yep, uh, eight one to one. Yep, that'll work. Oh boy, now you got all my secrets. Oh, yeah, <laughs> rod and reel. <laughs> And then put some uh, 20 pound Half- suffix advance on there. You're good. You're golden, bud. Right here, bud. Half ounce jackhammer. I can get your whole, mimic your whole setup without even getting out of my chair. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Better just tie two of those up and throw them on the deck of your boat and call her good for the year. Watch this out for the nice ceiling boat. fan. No, no. I'm not living or dying by that. You don't get to big dog it yet, bud. No, not yet. We got a ways to go. No, you still get to big dog it pretty good. You 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 earned it. Are we gonna wrap the show up? I feel like No, we probably should. I feel like this is just a regular yeah. uh evening and we gotta go to bed because we gotta wake up at three o'clock yeah. to go on a shad spawn. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Just feels well, like a regular regular night, same amount of beers, same amount of BS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The band's well, congrats- back together. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Tommy and Adam. Very impressive. Very uh, awesome to see. And really, thanks for coming on. That's awesome, you guys. Can't wait to see you soon. Heck yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks for boys. having us. Yeah, yeah, boys. Appreciate it. We'll see you uh, next weekend in Ufala, Oklahoma. Wait, Rob. I'll be there. All Catch right. Thanks, Path Galaxy. Thanks to uh, the Ginge Ninja. Thanks to Pat. I'm sure he's going nuts on the chat board right now. We haven't looked at it. I think it's on Facebook. <laughs> we don't go on Facebook Live. So if you're dropping comments and 
Well, we just didn't look at him. I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll meet up again. We've only the last time we had a big stretch on the road, so never really got to it. But we'll uh, we'll meet up again after you fall off. Take a look at uh, the standings. I'm sure there'll be some some controversy and drama. It seems to stem from every tournament. We didn't really touch on it tonight because it's kind of gone stale. But uh, yeah, thanks again, fellas, and we'll see you guys all soon. See you, thanks, boys. boys. Thanks again. Yep. Cheers, fellas. Yep. Good night.